Hi everyone, it is Sharon with Cozy Junk Studio. I am back for another video with you all today. Now I do want to apologize in advance. I do have COVID. I have been sick, but I am going to muddle through this video. We are going to be using some of IOD products as well as some of Roy Cycled's papers. Now Royce just dropped a new release. You can get any of these products at Aunt B's Attic. I will have the link in the description box below. Don't forget she has $9 flat rate shipping as well as the links below do give me a small percentage to pay towards products to use for my videos. This one I'm showing you right here is the Roy Cycled label master board. Now she has some gorgeous papers that she's just released including some Halloween. Just to let you all know, which will only affect if you shop at my antique mall booths, I'm going to be a Roy Cycled retailer. I actually am. I'm just waiting on my papers to come in. I've also been approved and ordered my first DIY Debbie's Design Diary clay paint order only in my antique store mall. All right, so... Let's go ahead and get started with these papers. We're going to use these in combination to upcycle some thrift store finds and some Dollar Tree items. This first item is just one of the plain white candles from the Dollar Tree. I've chosen this Royce label from the Masterboard label decoupage paper. I'm going to cut around it and I'm going to decoupage it onto this candle and maybe do a couple other little things here. So let's go ahead and get that cut out and get started. I'm just going to be using Mod Podge as my transfer glue as well as my sealer on this product. Now with this particular one, I did not paint the back of the decoupage paper white. You can. However, I figured with a white candle, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Also, I don't really paint the back of all of mine white. Um, when these dry, they become quite opaque. So... If you want to put white behind them for a crisper, brighter look, you can. But if you want a more antique kind of see-through, then I wouldn't suggest painting them. Okay, so we're just going to put the Mod Podge glue on the back of this. And then we're going to seal it on the front as well with the Mod Podge. As I put the Mod Podge over this, I, mind, I make sure that I get all the way around the edges and kind of up under the edges. And I'm going to go back in with a wet baby wipe or something to get that extra Mod Podge off. I don't want you to be able to tell that there's Mod Podge on the glass anywhere. There still will be a little and you'll see when we ink around this and I'll show you what I mean here in a little bit. The next thing I thought we would do once this dries is we're going to go ahead and add an IOD butterfly transfer on this. Uh, I thought it would go really good with a little mushroom and give it a really nice fall look or just someone who likes that mushroom butterfly boho look. Once we get this butterfly transferred on here, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing and put a clear coat of the Mod Podge over the whole piece again. I did go ahead and do that off camera and now we have gotten to our uh, piece that is completely dry and I'm going to take a stays on ink pad in the color stone gray and age around the edge of this and you'll see where there is glue left that it picks up with this stone I am just using the whole color. ink pad and going around the edges of this piece or the transfer and the glue and the decoupage paper and just kind of smearing it with the stays on ink it actually dries almost instantly it's not transferable in other words it doesn't get all over your hands it is not easily removed uh, you would actually have to take alcohol or some type of solvent it is a solvent ink so it's not going to be easily activated with water or anything like that now i'm just using one of these little foam ended uh, wood sticks to kind of go around the edges as well to do a little bit more grunging up once I finished, I thought it might need some numbers on it. So I have this little stamp here and I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put it. So I'm just going to use some more of that gray stone stays on ink and just put some random like one, two, three on this little piece. And then this piece will be finished. Now don't forget all of the photos will be at the end of the video along with the vignette. Our next project is a wooden cutting board or chartreuse board. I had already painted it white or started to, and I thought this would be perfect to add these pumpkins to. This 
These pumpkins are another one of Roy Cycled new release papers called Heirloom Pumpkins, as well as this typesetting uh, decoupage paper is called Grungy Subway. This is one of my favorite papers of hers. I was looking through some scrap pieces thinking what I could put behind these pumpkins and this just spoke to me. Okay, so I'm just going to be using Mod Podge. I'm just putting it on there. I'm not doing a starter area. I'm just laying it on there. I'm going to lay the whole piece on there. This is going to look a little rustic because we're going to tear it some. We're going to sand it some. We are going to trim around the pumpkins. Right now I'm just taking my Tim Holtz sprayer and I'm rolling it out really good to get any of the wrinkles out. It seems to work really well on this without tearing it. I'm using my finger as well. Now I'm just going to tear the top of this off and give it a torn look and do some sanding uh, around that later. We're going to go ahead and cut around our pumpkins and we're going to put some Mod Podge behind them on top of this paper. Once we do that and let it dry, I'm not going to go ahead and seal it yet. I'm just going to get my pumpkins down, let it dry, then bring it back. Before I do that, I do decide to go ahead and paint white behind my pumpkins because they are going on black paper and I really wanted those colors to show up well and I was not sure if the black would hinder that. We are also going to be adding a little label. As you'll see, I'm painting the back of that. Now we are going to go ahead and sand this off and get our edges the way that we want them before we add that pumpkin stack on there and that label because this is dry now. All right, so we are just going to add Mod Podge onto the back of these pumpkins and the back of the label because the paint is dry now and um, just put them on the same way. The label is also from the Roy Cycle Masterboard labels. And once my pumpkins dry, I go back and sand those sides of the large white pumpkin at the bottom. All right now we're going to add a complete coat of Mod Podge over all of the label and the pumpkin and the background paper because we did not do that earlier. It seems like a lot of steps, but it's not really. It just sounds like it when I'm explaining. I go ahead and add the Mod Podge all the way to the tip of the board just to keep the whole thing sealed in the same coat. One thing I do not show is I use that stone gray around the edge of this board and the edge of the paper to make it look vintage as well. Now this next little project is going to be this cute little, I forget what these are called, but they hold, I think they hold oil and it had like a um, stopper in the top of it. This one has a little chip and I thought we would upcycle it uh, and add just a little label and a butterfly to this. We're going to use the same process with the Mod Podge and the um, label with a butterfly. It just turns out really, really cute. And then we go around those edges with the ink as well. Once I get this butterfly and label on here and put some Mod Podge on it, get it cleaned up, I decided it needed a friend. So I pulled an IOD mushroom out transfer from the Mio's pages. Again, all of this will be linked in the description box below. The butterfly here is from this uh, label master board. So I did use a combination of the labels and the transfers on these projects. This next project, I love this little basket. It just looks so 70s, vintage, and boho. I really didn't want to do anything to the basket uh, itself, so I thought I would just add a couple little enhancements to it. Here are a set of pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. These are just on little clips, and I've got this wooden tag, and I thought that we would put some decoupage paper on it with a transfer and make this little pumpkin or this little basket look fall. Now I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put my pumpkin and it did look good several different places 
but I go ahead and settle on the front of it for the pumpkin and for the tag to go. What we're going to do is take some more of that uh, grungy subway, subway paper and decoupage it onto the tag with that torn look at the top and just put this transferable mushroom on top of it. Now, once we do this, then we'll go ahead and seal that up and put just basically put it in place. This one's a very simple one. All right, once I got my paper on, got it Mod Podged and dried, I did go ahead and add my transfer, Mod Podge over that, let that dry, and now I am going to take the stays on and just go around the edges and grunge this tag up just a little bit. Now I could have, uh, once the, um, I could have just Mod Podged both layers at the same time. I'm not sure why I didn't, but oh well. You can just put your paper down, not Mod Podge the top, add your uh, transfer, and then Mod Podge them all together. Really, it's totally up to you, or seal them, I guess I should say, depending on what sealer you're using. Now, I have some of these little um, sprigs here of different kinds of pit berries, so I'm just going to wire these together with some florist tape and then twist them on the basket so as to not, again, permanently attach anything to the basket. Now don't forget, I love when you guys comment below and let me know which one is your favorite. Let me know what you think about these projects in the description box below. And let me know what you think about this video. It is more of a little bit of a fall decor. My next one is going to be more of a little bit of dark and creepy. So get ready for that. Alright, this piece is a spindle. I picked up a couple of these. Um, I'm not sure what they're from, to be honest. They look plastic on the ends, but the red looks like wood. I don't know. We're going to add a label to this, though, and spruce it up a little bit for the fall season. I did go ahead and paint the back of this label with some white chalk paint and let it dry. And now we're adding Mod Podge just to uh, add it to this spindle. The reason I painted the back of this white was because of the red on the spindle, and I was worried that the label wouldn't show up as well. But it does not give it a really, really very vintage look like it might have if I wouldn't have painted it white. So either way would have been fine on this one for me. I thought we would add this uh, trio of mushrooms that would fit on the label and then also kind of go off to the sides of the label and just, um, I don't know, make it look really cute. One of the things I found with the IOD transfers, putting them on curved surfaces, they just come off so easily. We're going to finish this piece off adding some of that uh, stone gray ink around the edges to give it a little bit of an aged look. I'm not going to seal this one because this is not going to be something that should be touched. We've already sealed the label underneath, so I didn't go back over the whole thing with Mod Podge. I did forget that I do add a checkered ribbon as a little bow at the top of this with a little bit of hot glue to keep it in its place to finish this piece off. This next set project is a pair of beautiful rattan faux rattan because I think these are home co and they're plastic but they look like rattan they um, are boho 70s they were in my one of my antique booths and they did not sell so we are going to give these a cozy junk studio makeover the first thing we're going to do is add some wa uh, waverly no folk art black chalk paint to only the inner circle or ovals of this piece. We're leaving the outside the original color. Once we did and two coats no and let that thoroughly dry, now we're going to add some of these mushroom transfers. The first one, I'm just going to be able to cut a perfect little strip here and add the whole strip. However, I didn't have such luck and had to do the second one with singular mushrooms, which was fine. I just lined them up in a row like the first one. 
Before putting the transfers on, I did not uh, seal the chalk paint. I just went ahead and put the transfers on and then did a coat of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat over top of both of these sets of mushrooms and that finished both of these pieces off. Let me know what you think of the alteration of these pieces in the description box below. Now I did love the absolute adorable boho 70s look before but now they have kind of a boho dark look to them. Our last project is a very simple one. We're going to take this very old aged patinaed pie pen, pan, tin. I cannot speak. I'm so happy to be making it to the end of this video. I'm going to be using some of these heirloom pumpkins. Well, actually just one, the green one. I don't know. I something about it. I just loved singularly with adding nothing to it, not painting the pan. You guys, you'll have to tell me what you think about this. I love this piece. It's so simplistic with the single pumpkin with the antique look let me know all right we're just going to add some of this tight bond quick and thick as well as some hot glue and a simple piece of twine as our hanger now this is our last project let's get on into these photos I hope you all enjoyed these projects and I hope to see you in the next video.